Welcome to this season kickoff episode of Prep Sports Live, your home for high school football. I'm Brad Gonzalez. Thanks, Bryant. I've got the game between Steel Canyon and Mira Mesa. But before that, I'm going to toss it over to Jordan and see what he's got for us. All right, we have an exciting game for you in Valley Center. The Lacoste Canyon Mavericks taking on the Valley Center Jaguars. The Mavericks are 3-3. and They won their last game against San Marcos. Valley Center's record is 4-2. and It's going to be a great game, so let's send it to our reporter in the field, Samuel Rizzo, who has more for us. You're watching Prep Sports Live, your home for high school football. I'm Brad Gonzalez, and I've got a great Division I championship game between the Oceanside Pirates and the Lincoln Hornets. But first, we're going to send it on to Natalie Lopez to see what she's got for us. Well, there you have it, folks. Helix taking care of things on senior night, 49-27. to Grant Hills did make things close, but ultimately, Helix took care of business at home. Back to you guys at the desk. First quarter senior quarterback for the Cougars, Jeremy Mendez Gall, launches an intercontinental ballistic missile to Anthony Walker to set up in Marauder territory. Thanks, Chris. I've got a battle between a couple of two and three teams, the San Marcos Knights against the La Costa Canyon Mavericks. Both teams are looking to bounce back from tough starts and keep the momentum rolling into the playoffs. Thanks, Blake. I've got a real David and Goliath matchup between Mir Mesa and Steel Canyon. The Marauders have struggled so far this year, and the Cougars have been perfect in the win column all season. Can Mira Mesa pull off some underdog magic, or will Steel Canyon handle business at home? Let's find out. Second quarter underway, and the Mavs are looking to get things going, and they give it to the right guy, Aiden Lippert. He finds some holes in the defense, and LaCosta goes up 7-6. Every punch that the Mavericks threw, it seemed like the Knights fought back as Xavier Reese would hit control, all delete on the Mavericks' deep for 17 yards to go up 12-7. San Marcos having a hard time with that extra point. Third quarter things heat up with Caden Von Out punching one in, making it 19-7 San Marcos. Aiden Lipper answers right back, acting as a spark plug for this Mavs offense, going 20 yards to keep things close at 19-14. In the fourth quarter, Marshall Euchre finds number one on the field and number one in Lacoste's hearts. Aiden Lipper for a 52-yard touchdown pass. This would be Lippert's third touchdown of the night. At this point, the Mavs are only down by four. And then it would be none other than Aiden Lippert. He goes for his fourth touchdown of the game to give the Mavericks their first lead since the second quarter, 28 to 25. Things are looking dire for the Mavericks with no timeouts, 33 seconds left and a running clock. Marshall Euchre finds Blake Witzenberg wide open for the game winner. Knights bend the knee in this one. Mavs win 35-32 over San Marcos. Our first matchup features the Cathedral Catholic Dons and the Madison Warhawks. The Dons are entering this game with a 6-1 record. Meanwhile, the Warhawks are entering this one with a 4-2 record. Let's send it to Kyle Dyer for more on that game. Um, well, we've just been working hard every single day, and uh, just it all starts on our line, and so uh, uh, it's all my line, like all credit to all my line, and uh, they just open holes, and just hopefully I can just take them and see what happens. We've been preparing for it for... Uh, ever since summer and, and even before that, so it would mean a lot to work this hard and then uh, come out with the championship. There you have it, folks. El Camino moves on to the Division II championship next week behind four Noah Sega touchdowns. As for Vista's offense, they could not get it done at home. This is Prep Sports Live. I'm Brad Gonzalez. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Quentin. I've got the game of the week between the San Marcos Knights and the La Costa Canyon Mavericks. But first, Prep Sports Live starts right now. And one more time, sponsored by Amanda Tamburino, here's the number one play of the week from the amazing Palmer Bird. Thanks, Jordan. I've got a great Division I championship matchup between the Oceanside Pirates and the Lincoln Hornets. Some players to watch out for are Kavika Tour for the Pirates and Keyshawn Smith for the Hornets. Should be a great game. Let's roll the tape and see what happens. Second quarter, he's a freshman, but he's sure not playing like it. It's Samuel Cooper, the fourth. He's not taking no for an answer, tying things at seven, going into halftime. Third quarter action, I hope you like ice cream because we've got Sean Ramsey with the scoop and the score. He takes it 62 yards for a pivotal Pirates touchdown, putting them up 14-7 early in the second half. The Hornets would not go down without a fight though. Samuel Cooper dials one up and Keyshawn Smith answers with an incredible catch. I don't care what level you're on, that is a high caliber play. Smith isn't done though, going 27 yards after the catch for a 58-yard gain to set Lincoln up with the field goal. And on the ensuing drive, it's Jacob Harris sizing up the defense. He tosses one to a wide open Tyrell Bellman. Bellman goes the distance to put the Pirates on top to make it a three score game. That would be enough for the Oceanside Pirates. You know, we just, we've been putting in the work, you know, that, that's all it takes. You know, we just come together as a family, do what we do. And, you know, we really wanted this. You know, we fought hard for this. You know, we came in as an underdog, ninth seed, and, you know, we just put on a show for the city. You know, I got a lot of improvement that I want to do for myself. You know, a lot of people say that. I'm like perfect where I am, but no, I feel like I can go way further than this. Uh, we came back and we, we grouped ourselves together and uh, 
we just tried to take advantage of all their mistakes and and what we could find to do better do better at when we went in during halftime. It's just we put Oceanside back on the map, baby. EC did it yesterday, and then we did it today. An amazing comeback from them. I just appreciate everything, and it's a cool experience to do it with my brother. I love him to death. That's my man. There you have it, folks. Oceanside gets the huge Division I championship upset win over the Lincoln Hornets, 28-10, to behind big games from Kavika Tua and Sean Ramsey. This was a great game. A lot of turnovers, a lot of action. Back to you guys at the desk. Wow, what a hard-fought game by both teams, but LaCosta came out with a win on homecoming. This game definitely lived up to the hype for Game of the Week with three lead changes in the fourth quarter. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Ryan. I've got a great Division II matchup between the number seven seed El Camino Wildcats and the number three seed Vista Panthers. But first, we're going to send it on to Bella Hauser to see what she's got for us. Then it's Isaac Tina Samoa who barrels his way in for the Wildcats, tying things up at seven. To close out the half, it's the Noah Sega show as he uses his ball hawk instincts to get the jump on this one. He gets the pick six to put the Wildcats up by seven, going into halftime. We'll have a quick commercial break, but don't go anywhere because coming up, we have RBV versus Vista on the green screen. Uh, you know, it's always good to um, come out, you know, help the team. Um, got the win, you know, and I was able to um, make some big plays for my team. We want to um, go out with a big win, you know, uh, put up a lot of points, you know. Got to be better in, this, in the second half of the game, but, you know, always a win is great. A couple plays later, Mendez Gall decides having a cannon for an arm isn't as fun as pouncing for a Cougars touchdown, making it 7-0 Steel Canyon. Fourth quarter, Kiris Masi fires to Angel Almazan to put the icing on the cake and complete their total domination of the Marauders. The final score coming out to 45 Steel Canyon, Mir Mesa, 0. Second quarter, it's Keontae Scott again from 16 yards out. Scott is out here playing chess while everyone is playing checkers. Scott with three touchdowns in this one. Thanks, Kyle. I've got a great game between the Granite Hills Eagles and the Helix Highlanders. Granite Hills is 4-4 four and, four and looking for a big upset win over Helix, and the Scotties are 7-1, and one, but they don't have their star running back, El Elyon Noah. Should be a great game. Let's see what happens. Helix continues to dominate this game as quarterback Cameron Brown finds Keontae Scott for two straight touchdowns. The Scotties are pouring it on thick like Thanksgiving gravy, 21-0. Thanks, Kyle. Another dominant win for Cathedral. They improved to 7-1 on the year, and Madison falls to 4-3. Jalen Boehner with the ball again, and he drops it like it's hot for his second turnover of the quarter, both teams giving the ball away like Halloween candy. Brown tosses a beauty to Jalen Boehner, who does his best Odell Beckham Jr. impression to make it first and goal on the Wildcats' one-yard line. This is no problem for Emmett Brown and his offensive line. Knights punch one in and go up 13-0 at the half. Let's go ahead and get back to more exciting matchups we've got in store. Granite Hills playing like their hair is on fire. They recover the onside kick and keep possession. We've got a game, folks. Welcome back to Prep Sports Live, your home for high school football. We're coming near the end of our show, but we have one last thing for you. You're watching Prep Sports Live, your home for high school football. I'm Brad Gonzalez, and I've got the game between the Granite Hills Eagles and the Helix Highlanders. But first, I'm going to send it on to Quentin Smith to see what he's got for us. And don't go anywhere, because when we come back, we have your favorite segments. Game of the Week and Plays of the Week. This is Prep Sports Live, your home for high school football. We'll be right back. First quarter, the Knights strike first as sophomore quarterback Emmett Brown hits senior wide receiver Gavin Cherveny to jump out to a 7-0 lead with that 29-yard touchdown pass. Pirates quarterback Jacob Harris drops one in on an absolute dime to Trahan Apodaca to take a 14-7 lead over the Knights early in the second quarter. A few minutes later, the Pirates would get the ball back and hand it to star running back number seven, Kavika Tua, who runs like he was shot out of a cannon, showcasing that track star speed to take it all the way to the house for an 80-yard touchdown run. Wow, that guy's a stud. To put the Pirates in front, 21-7, going into halftime. The Knights get the ball back again, down just 43-35. Brown slings a long one to Reese, and it is picked off by Trehan Apodaca. The Pirates defense with the absolute dagger to upset San Marcos at home. The final score would be 43-35 in this Avocado League shootout. The Pirates were led by Kavika Tua with over 200 yards of total offense in this one. And I'm Brad Gonzalez. Have a good night.